So welcome everybody. Uh, we have today, uh, I guess, 40, 45 minutes talk of uh, Florian Festi. Uh, thank you very much, Florian, for agreeing to, to give this talk, actually. Uh, Florian uh, was graduated as a computer science in University of Stuttgart in 2006 and has been working since then in Red Hat, so long uh, industry experience. But he's uh, most known in the makerspace community, the FabLab community, by one of his uh, development. Is uh, how are you? But many of the people who has been uh, uh, working in FabLab's environment, makerspace, especially when you are doing things with the with the laser cutter, you have used his uh, tool. And well, he, I guess today he's going to tell you a little bit about how this tool was born and um, well, he can tell a little bit <laughs> of, the, of the tool. So thank you very much and welcome to all of you. So, uh, short outline. Start, I want to talk about how the product started. I, I we got here the uh, why do uh, box generator at all. Um, then I want to go a bit from the first intentions, what to do to the actual architecture of the, of the tool, not too much in detail, so you won't be a programmer after that, but you will get an understanding how the tool works and things, and uh, will maybe understand better why it looks the way it does. So the architecture user interface, and you will get a better understanding of why it's the way it is. And then we will uh, look into what has happened the last nearly 10 years that, that this have been developing this, and we will look at what's going on right now and look at the future of possible future work. Um, so how did this all start? In uh, late uh, 2012, my hackerspace bought a laser cutter. This was a very different time than now. Nowadays, everyone and their mother has a laser cutter. We had to order that from China and it came in a box. I just want to express uh, my gratitude for hosting uh, this meeting. It was exciting. Um, we started, well, thank you very much for hosting this At some point, you have big, you have big laser cutter. Marty, Marta, Kumpolo, Lalala, Daniela. Thank you all for joining this meeting. There's some box. And so we did look at the internet and see what, what, what is there. And it turned out there wasn't that much back then. So we found this is the first box we cut, basically, which which final saw. It's an still on Thingiverse, and it's basically a postscript file where you can type in some numbers within the postscript file and the program then in uh, But it had a couple of problems, and um, it was very clear that that's not a sustainable way to go to have all of the postscript. What's wrong with you? So I was looking at just anything else, um, and what I was looking for, I want to have a, a, a box generator. There should be not just one box, but a whole set of boxes. I had ideas uh, of things I wanted to have. I, I was very uh, fond of these flex cuts, even if they turned out not to be as practical, but they look really, really cool. And there are a few things that are actually useful you can do with them. Um, I, of course, wanted, to have, wanted it to be open source, not so much for political reasons, but it's the very, op the, I wanted to have the benefits of open source. And it's very obvious you want to modify that, you want to tinker with it. Yes, a box generator, you just hit one button and then it does something, it's not that useful because very soon you will run into problems and you want to adjust things. Uh, so that's <laughs> Okay, I think I'm going to. No, I'm not going to allow it. Unmute. Thank you. So, so one thing I, of course, wanted is uh, be able to select the material thickness, which is something that a lot of a lot of the Thingiverse boxes didn't have. They were basically well. You use this quarter inch plywood, and if you have a different type of material, it won't work. And so I very quickly noticed this is something you need to have, otherwise, it's more or less pointless, unless you have a ready supply of exactly the material, all those 
different things. <laughs> so, of course, I wanted to have a front correction, which is also cur called curve, which basically means to compensate for the material the laser cover cuts away. So you can adjust that. Uh, that's something we are using heavily in, in our hackerspace. So most boxes I do is press fitted in the, in the curve is adjusted to a few hundreds of a millimeter to make sure it's, everything goes together with just the right amount of preservation with I am um, And of course, I wanted flex cuts, uh, which will become important. Uh, on what to uh, on what basis to use, and I wanted to have uh, SVG and DXF output, which is something that most of the laser cover softwares uh, would would be using or would be able to read. Um, and actually, this is also something that 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 was harder than I anticipated. So there's actually very little support for converting all those different formats into each other. That's that's a it's a pain. It's I've solved it to some extent, but it's still not comfortable. <laughs> so I'm currently uh, using uh, post script as output and then pass it to uh, PS to edit and use the scout script. And this is all kind of problem if something is updated. So uh, this was something I wanted and it turned out to be not as easy as I had hoped. So I was, so what did, did you want when you saw first to a laser cutter? Um, who has used laser cutter? Nearly everyone. There are a few people who have. It. You should. <laughs> laser, laser covers are cool. They are easy to use. They have two two things for them. They are quick and precise, and uh, that's a cool combination. Um, who has used boxes pile? Everyone. Okay, that, that's very good because this is not an introduction. So if you want to learn boxes pile, you have to go elsewhere. There's a help page. You can just click on it. Uh, that, that's what we're doing. Who has used Boxes Pi to generate something and then put it together in Inkscape and, and mangle it and do something else? Okay, this is a uh, so two thirds for those who are not seeing that on, online. Um, so there's, there's a good, good amount of use. Very good. Um, next slide. Sorry. Yep. So then I was looking for solutions. There's, there actually was and still is a pretty good uh, box generator from a G German guy, which lives not that far from, my, from me in Ulm. Uh, but it's a closed source thing. And I'm while I'm a big proponent of open source, I'm not a big proponent of evangelizing. So in making promises of uh, how our future will be created if everything's open source. So I decided not to pop him too much and the both projects still exist. You can still get there. You have to pay a few euros a year, I think, to get the, get theirs, get uh, access to his uh, uh, generator. And you can look at all the stuff he does. He's also about 50 different um, models. Um, but that meant I, so I decided that that's not a route for me. I have to look at something else, but it was important for me because I wanted to make sure I'm not like copying that. So uh, this was a, um, an intentional thing for me to say, well, I'm not copying other people's work one-to-one. -one. I I mean, there's not that much thing you can do if it's a box and maybe it will be uh, with its corners and sides and stuff. So, so, so you're limited <laughs> in what you can do, but I, I, I made sure that at least all the details are, are my own and I'm not like, Copying stuff one to one. Then I looked into FreeCut, which also has some Python scripting, but back then it was not that stable. And it, um, I'm not a, I'm not a, a CAD cut, so I can't do computer. So the whole thing starts in to some extent because I'm too stupid to use computer to design. So basically, I decided that OpenSCAD is just not quite what I was looking for, and it will. It's basically a 3D versus 2D thing. I was very clear this needs to be a 2D because laser cutters are 2D. I needed to join and turning something that's inherently 2D into a lot of triangles and then cutting them uh, into something 2D again didn't sound very appealing to me. Um, also, performance on both of these tools, in my opinion, is still not great. It wasn't great back then. Uh, and 
if you start with this flex cut, there are a lot of lines that you want to have things move fluidly. And so I decided to do my own thing. I started Proxys.py, uh, which is the stupidest name ever because you can't get a Peregrine top level domain as if you're not there, which is, uh, I should have thought about this earlier, but I did. Um, and I decided to write it in Python because I'm doing this for fun. So uh, yeah, basically no other options. Um, I was looking quite a while to, to find a library and I chose Cairo, which was fine to get started, but turned out to be a bit of a pain. It's from the GNOME project, so I should have been wrong, but um, it was a good way to get started because it could uh, turn the drawing into multiple different formats, which was obviously something I wanted. <coughs> then I decided to use chocolate graphics because it's a beginner project, it's easy. Chocolate graphics, for those who don't know, that's very simple. You have a pen and you can basically go straight ahead and turn in some directions. So it's super simple. It's basically a beginner's uh, programming lesson 101 and on the first day. So that, that's, it's basically a, a beginner's lesson gone too far. Um, and then I uh, decided, well, I need some, com I need some parameters of course. So I decided to use the Python standard library ArcParse, which uh, has nice help streams. It's for command line tools basically. And I said, well, that's, that's good enough for me. That's a very well, well-rounded library. Um, and I decided to, I wanted to have uh, all the features scale with material thickness. So all the fingers would look the same if you would use thick, thicker material. And also um, this, my idea was that this was, would uh, allow bigger boxes to have the features more stable. So, so they would be more rugged, the bigger the box would get because you would use thicker material and would also make those features bigger and stronger which turned out fine. So then there are a couple of design goals. Some of those are more in hindsight. I mean, this is basically a good software engineering 101, but you have to learn lessons <laughs> basically on the doing anyway. Uh, so uh, the design is optimized now and it was from the beginning, but it got better and better and better to make the box generators as simple and quick to do as possible. So everything else that is, has to happen is automated and moved elsewhere. And the boxes generator are basically only two function, uh, two methods. The first to set up all the, uh, all the argument, arguments because you need them at the beginning. And then there's another method that just renders the, uh, the drawing. And that's basically all you have to implement for your particular box. And everything else happens automatically. Then a lesson, I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious, but it's something that also have to learn the hard way is don't put numbers somewhere and somewhere else. And then if you change one, everything else gets out of sync. Put everything into some variables if, if possible. Uh, that's somehow difficult because it means you need a lot of names and naming things is hard. And there are only so much two letter abbreviations you can use <laughs> before going crazy, but, but a lot of uh, design is made to, to avoid uh, redundant numbers that will make the box not fit together. Um, and one thing I, I was uh, keen on at the very beginning, I thought, well, I need these, these, these different type of edges. Uh, they are important, obviously, and I want um, a way to easily change that. So whenever that's something you will probably have seen in the, in the UI, a lot of places you can just select the type of edge you want to have somewhere. So I want that to be easy to swap out during programming, but also on, or for the user to, to select the, the type of edge. Um, and you want to make sure the edges fit together. So you need to make sure all the settings that go into this edge is centralized somehow. So that if you have two different edges that are supposed to fit together, share the same settings. So you are not accidentally making Figures bigger on one side and not on the other side. And then that's what I already said. I didn't want to copy stuff from other people. So this ended up in this architecture. Um, there's basically the top level stuff that it creates a, uh, that provides a user interface, either the web page that you have, might have all used, or the Inkscape plugin, which is basically the same thing, just that an XML file that Inkscape uses. Or, you, or the command line interface, which is basically 
provided for free from the cross uh, library. Underneath this, uh, that there are the single different generators. There are over 100 now, so they pile, pile up. And the, the trick is that there, there's a tiny little layer in between that basically provides a list of all generators to those things above. That, that means I don't have to touch these whenever I add a new generator, but it's all Python introspection magic that, that creates those lists. Um, so I basically have just to drop a new file somewhere and it gets added. Uh, automatically. Underneath the generators, there are the parts. That's something you probably might have had in your hand, basically all those walls. Um, and the, the trick here is that the parts are basically an abstract shape, and then they are decorated around with the, with the different edges. So there's only one rectangular wall, and you can basically uh, choose whatever edges you want on, on each side. Um, so there are very, actually very few parts, a lot of generators do their own, of course, um, but um, I think there's only like a handful of parts that are actually in the main library for general use. There's the rectangular wall, there is uh, a wall with, with rounded edges, there's, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's with circles, sorry, a round circle probably counts also, and there's, there's a, a, a triangular brace and I think two more. And that's basically it. And everything is built from those. Um, then there are the edges. I, at the beginning, thought you only need like a handful of those, so I can just assign uh, uh, characters per, per edge, which was super handy. Turns out that the alphabet actually has very few characters for some reason. I don't know why. So, so 50 is a small number. <laughs> if, you, if you count uh, two times uh, 26. So, I'm running out of, 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 of namespace there. Uh, I probably need to clear it up at some point. And underneath there, there are the drawing primitives, which are basically just uh, those uh, uh, turtle graphic commands. They are only just a handful. There's a tiny layer in between for things like uh, drawing holes or stuff like this. But um, there's actually not much. And the drawing is um, very, um, very simple. Um, there's one trick in there that the drawing directives actually do uh, the curve correction. So within the very basics of, of the drawing, we are doing the, the outsets uh, for, for the burn correction. And this is done uh, by just adjusting the radii of the corners. That's all it does. So basically, if you have a rectangle, you basically move all the lines outside and you make a small little arc in the corners. And that's basically all your, all your um, lines outside. It's that simple. It's a bit more complicated if you have inner corners, then you have negative radii. And if you just believe that that's a valid thing, it just works. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I did study math. <laughs> and there's uh, the settings handling which we'll look into uh, later on in, in detail. That's the uh, hidden hero of the whole library because that does a lot of things without looking too excited. So uh, one important, so let's look, let's look at the parts uh, uh, layer. Uh, they're just simple method calls. So they're just, they're not even a proper um, um, class or something. There's not a hierarchy. There are just a couple of features that you typically should implement. That's one of the parts. Uh, one is that you can use a, a parameter for setting the edges and um, using uh, single characters for each ed edge type means that you can easily just pass a string of four characters to four the four edges of your rectangular wall. So it's very quick to type a couple of, of walls down there. Just one, you just copy the line and then adjust a few characters you need to make sure they fit together. Um, they have uh, a move parameter, so to place them, you can basically choose what to move your, your so there's basically your cursor for actually drawing, but there's a basically, if you step out, there's a cursor for placing your parts, which is the same cursor, where you can draw the part and then move uh, to the side by the width of the part or to move up and down. There's also the way to just move and not draw the part, 
for now, you need to know the size, which is something I need to fix that's on the, on the to-do list. Um, but back then, when we are still using the Cairo library, this was the only way to do it back then. Another thing that most parts support are callbacks. That means um, you can basically pass in a function that, that does features in the area of the part. And the trick here is that basically, when we look at the V method pointer, you can see, I know. <laughs> What's the wrong button? Okay. Doing this. So if you look at this uh, side plate, this is a uh, custom uh, uh, part basically. And um, the, the trick with the callback is that there are callbacks for each side basically. And they're and they're when they are called, the cursor is put in the corner of the inner of the inner area. So you don't have to care what what type of edge is underneath you. So you, so there's basically a virtual um, side and then there's the edges are outside of that typically. Um, and so if you if I change the edge down below, it doesn't affect this callback. And I can basically choose which side is more convenient to, to put the holes at the right place. So if I have these two holes that are holding this front plate, I of course use this callback so I don't have to do any calculations. I just know there's this length and I probably need to know how long this is, but that's all I need to know. And then you can and, and have a basically a coordinate system that starts here and looks in this. And I can just say, well, two thicknesses up. And uh, so I don't have to deal with all these angles and, and stuff. I have to deal with the angles to some extent because it's not a really proper graphics library. It's just doing the simple, uh, Turtle graphics thing, so you need to calculate the angles and stuff like this, but you don't have to do it everywhere. So a lot of uh, box generators like this one has some custom parts that they use for just this one, one page. Um, then we come to edges, which is, um, the, the workhorse of the library. There's a whole sun, uh, uh, set of them. Now, all those um, um, hinges are made of different edges that, that provide the, the different types of uh, axles and and, uh, uh, and and hinge eyes and stuff like this. Um, they, they are proper uh, classes because they do know all the things they need to be outset properly and, and everything is aligned as it should be. Um, the, the trick here is that they are come basically in families that share their own settings class. So there's a chat settings instance basically for all finger joints. And that's also what you see in a, a user interface. So that makes sure that they all fit together and you can basically create a Another one has a different set of, of edges, which is something we will look at soon. Let's see how this works in practice. This is a type tray. I don't know, maybe someone has seen this already and I'm using it on, on, on his uh, work, work desk or uh, his workshop. And what are we, and it's medium complexity box. I mean, it's a box outside and has uh, uh, partitions inside. Um, and what we actually wanted to have is this, which is this subride, and you can throw all your uh, electronic parts in there. We needed it uh, urgently. This is the first prototype, which is always tiny and cute and cheaper than doing the big thing at first and then throwing this away three times. And it's basically the same generator. So I took this copied the file and then adjusted it to do this. So what do we need to do? Well, this is this uh, great feature where you can put the inner, uh, the inner walls, make them lower than the outer walls. We don't need it. So we just delete the, 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 the parameters to do that. Then we turn it upside down, which we basically ignore because people can turn it upside down themselves. And then we are replacing these edges by a, by a, a a custom edge, which is this one. So this is not this is not a part. This is a rectangular wall, as you can clearly see. 
<laughs> and all we did is basically we replaced this straight wall, uh, edge by an edge that has these uh, uh, protrusions. Um, and it, we cheat normally, the edge only gets basically called with the length it's supposed to be, but we pass the sections here. So which, which is kind of breaking uh, the, 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 the design of the edge a bit, but we don't care, we just make sure it fits. Then we change those edges, which are which, uh, which are these ones, which also were straight. To do that, we are basically copying the settings from those edges and create a new set of, of finger joint edges that have that are using this angle. So these are not the same as these, but they are shorter, so they can actually so they meet here in one line, even if, if the uh, even at this angle. So we've changed basically. The depth here, we change these edges, we change these edges, and then all we need is add these pieces, which are obviously also rectangles, and we're, which get those additional finger holes, and be done with it. That's all you need to do. So this was done actually pretty quickly. So, so people were complaining we need to tidy up the, the electronics corner, and I was done in, I don't know, half an hour, an hour to, to just sit down, code in, do the first test cuts, because for some reason, if you don't cut it, it doesn't fit. I don't know why there's there's some, 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 some law. Uh, and that's how we're done, so. So back to parameter handling, this is, uh, we still have time. Um, this is the, 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 the hidden hero, in my opinion. So the thing is, parameter handling needs to do three things at once. First, it needs to offer you a UI so you can actually enter something. Then it needs to parse whatever you entered. And then it needs to uh, store that and make this available within the, the uh, box generator. And it does all three things. And I started with, with ArcParse, uh, Arc and it allows to do groups, uh, which is basically the, the groups you see in the UI. Um, and there are two groups that are just added for every uh, generator. The default settings, which are basically the thickness and everything, it's at the bottom uh, part of, the, of, of every uh, UI uh, that's get, that's get generated automatically. And then there are the um, settings for the generator themselves, based typically the dimensions of the box or whatever features you have. Um, because the idea was to make this as easy and quick as possible. Um, there's a set of predefined arguments, which is the reason why those descriptions are so bad and generic. But uh, basically, I, I just, there's basically one line where you say, well, I need X, X Y, H, and the uh, top edge. And it basically generates the whole settings from that, including the description, everything else that's annoying and, and, and a lot of time. You, of course, can just uh, do common, uh, do can custom ones just by adding them to the uh, um, bus arcs uh, group normally. And then there's, there's the setting for edges and this is done in, in, in two, two pieces. There are uh, separate classes that uh, store them because we need a class uh, later on to, to make sure that the edge objects have something to refer to. But they also generate the, the bus arcs groups. So basically if you want to add the, the settings for for example, finger joints into the into some generator. It's one line basically to say, well, I need those settings in the settings class generates all those uh, pass arcs, uh, the whole pass arcs groups with all the details, including the different uh, options and data types and everything. And on the way back, when the parameters are parsed, those are actually generated. So they also there's code that generates those uh, uh, setting objects back from the settings in there then end. And it goes even one, so that was at the beginning and now it goes one step up further that the settings actually know what edges they are for and they generate the edges also. So, so it's all that basically done by magic and you know, all you need to say, well, well I, need, get, I need finger child settings and then everything's happening. So that's basically the overall architecture. 
uh, with what I started or what developed overall. Uh, and over time, a lot of other features started to, to pile up, basically. Um, the boxes pipe started as a, as a pure command line tool. And at some point, I realized, wait a second, the browsers can show S S v uh, uh, SVG. So why not just make it a, put a uh, red UI in front of it? And it was surprisingly easy. All I do is basically I go through the pass arcs structure and turn it into a HTML, which is surprisingly simple. Um, it's simple because we are only have a few data types, so it's, it's, it's a bit hacky, but it's very little code actually to do that. And um, sometimes later I said, well, <laughs> we could do that in Inkscape too. We, if we can put, if we have this transferred into HTML, we can also transfer it into XML. It's basically the same thing. It's the same operation. It's not a script. It does a bit the formatting a little bit differently, but it's very <coughs> simple. Uh, at some point, I did a Jupyter notebook, which is kind of different than the other two, but it's basically just a Python shell that, that allows you to do the coding. It doesn't basically allows you to do one generator and it's not it's the other two, which basically export all of the generators to a new domain. Um, at some point I added uh, Sphinx documentation. I think I did it because I was uh, pretty sick. So I had to put, uh, take a lot of medication and it was, uh, it was in a state of mind that writing documentation is a useful thing you can do. Um, no sane person would write documentation voluntarily, obviously, but um, then people were complaining that the, all their users can't, can't speak English and they need to have this translated. So we added uh, uh, translations to, uh, to the UI, which is something that needs more love. But my English is good and a lot of it's driven by what I need, I don't know. <laughs> um, but, but yes, translations now, mostly everything is, is translatable. There's a French translation, I think in Portuguese maybe, and someone translated it to, in, into Chinese actually, which I've no idea if it's correct or not, <laughs> but, 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 but you can select it. Um, then we repl replaced Cairo. Cryo was a pain because it's a, a C library for Linux and it, in theory can compile it for Windows, but people have pro problems with that. I don't because I don't use Windows. Um, but it also has other limitations that's, that's, that are not great. And so that's something I was thinking about, but someone else was beaten to that. They need such a well, I have a new backend. It, uh, it does all, all the commands that the Cairo uh, library supports. It's basically a drop in replacement. Uh, and it worked fine. We had a, sure, there was a bit back and forth to make it work 100%, but it works now. It's fine. It's great. And it allowed us to do more things because we have now more control over what's happening there. Uh, then we, a few more generators were added. We are above 100 now. Uh, it probably approaches to 120 now, but there's, it's, for me, it's difficult because I have all this unfinished crap in my local, local directory, uh, but um, it's growing. Um, there's a whole new group for slap walls. I don't know if you know what this is. It's basically, it's very used in uh, clothing shops where you can put hooks in the wall by just uh, slotting them in. Um, I have a picture of them, I hope on the next slide. Um, and we got those for our uh, uh, wood workshop. And so we needed uh, tool holders for that. Um, I, at some point, uh, did uh, laser cut hinges, which work reasonably well. Um, and there are a couple of, of features that were added to the basically to the base library. One was uh, tabs, which allowed you to keep the places, uh, the parts in place so that they don't fall out. We did uh, these cute little robots and they had a lot of pieces. And if they all fall down in your laser cutter, you have a lot of fun uh, getting them out, sorting them by, by, by uh, 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 
by robot and then piecing them together. And uh, so we needed a solution for that. Um, then some people were complaining that they can't build, a, they can't put the boxes together. So they, so we added labels to that. So you can now label the parts to say what part is what and where does it go. It's not. This is something that's relatively easy to get in most places. This is something you need to get everywhere, so it's not complete, but um, you're getting there. And we, the new um, uh, backend allowed us to finally uh, fix the inner corners in a way that people don't complain that loudly. Um, so we're now basically replacing the, the overlapping corners by nice loops, or you can just cut them off if you don't want to. So how does things look like uh, right now? So development has been up and down, up and down. COVID has not been great for, for, for me and for Boxes Pie and for a lot of other people. So things are going slow a lot, but there's a lot of uh, contribution from the party contributors right now. So I'm, I'm, I'm more reviewing and merging stuff than I'm doing myself nearly. So it goes uh, pretty well. Project is gaining popularity. This is something I don't measure, but I, I get noticed, which is kind of creepy. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I still have some things I want to do. Uh, so the, the project is still not done in, in, in that sense. Um, what I'm working currently is make those, this is uh, one of the slack wall uh, tool holders. They, they hook into slots and I, um, Someone was complaining that they have some other type of wall for some reason. Um, and so I'm currently moving all those to a new uh, infrastructure that will allow putting basically different type of hooks or, or connections to them. So the whole section will be renamed and uh, be better, trade out, whatever. Um, they, something I've been toying around is compliant mechanisms, which is a cool thing on its own. Um, and it has sneaked into the uh, some of the generators already. We have snap fits or have uh, uh, laser cut springs. For one of those is the um, the box we saw at the beginning with the side wall. So those the front wall is basically connected with the integral spring tabs that are. Uh, made from one piece that snap into there and, and lock this uh, plate in place. Um, I've started working on a microscope stage, which which, I still, which is still not finished. And I need to get back to basically a lot of um, a linear motion um, um, systems to, to, to actuate very tiny, very precise motions, which is uh, sounds cool, but I've not made completely work yet. Uh, Another thing that I probably will just uh, uh, release at some point, I wanted to do a, a cryptic calendar, which is basically a script that's made out of triangles and, and, and circles. And if you put the right border around it, you can actually read it. So if you, if you have, don't have a border, it's basically um, hieroglyphs. Um, and I have a full font for that, all, all letters and all numbers, but. Uh, Turns out doing perpetual calendars is not as easy as I first thought, and so it's not finished. <laughs> but I will probably just do a generator just for the, for the text I need. Uh, so what what's in the future? I want to get back to gears. I did one run on gears, so there's there's a gear get generator in there, but it's doing a proper gearbox is not quite the same as just some gears, but you have to have an idea of how you um, actually make sure the increased torque is actually um, going over those gears. And uh, you need to think about proper um, bearings and everything. So that's not done. Um, one thing I want to do is uh, reuse generators and others. So you can actually have full assemble, uh, assembly of things like you have, a, you have a rack and you can have drawers in them. You can do that now, but you have to basically do that separately. Which is annoying because you can mess up the um, the dimensions and then it doesn't fit, which is something that's happening more often than it should. And maybe that's a way out. Um, and the uh, backend needs more work. It's basically currently a drop-in replacement for Le Cairo, and 
we could do more things like not needing to calculate sizes of parts and stuff like this if we put more work into that. Uh, knobs and latches is on the long list that's missing for some reason. All the, all the boxes don't have them, and that's kind of bad. Um, one thing I have, you know, I've actually started, but it's, um, it's more of an idea than a finished thing is to have callbacks for the whole box. So you can basically put a feature on a box like, like a latch to say, well, so I have a latch, I need holes here, I need holes here, I need something on the sides, and you basically can apply the whole package in one box, in one thing, and we'll see how this goes. And of course, one plan is to further grow the community, which means I need to update my uh, Hackaday.io page at some point, which I have to do So that's boxes file. What can you do? Spread the word. Uh, send in missing pictures if you if you do anything. There's a link at the bottom. You just press that and upload your picture to the right uh, GitHub uh, um, ticket. Um, if you if you're troubled with with building the box and getting it together, provide some instructions. They're, they're very sparse because I know how the box fits together because I fucking broke it. Broke it. <laughs> um, yeah, and if you if you do your own box generators, open a pull request or send a file to me. You can clean it up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, so do we have questions from the audience? Unfortunately, we don't have people online, but we have here at least few people who have been using. Uh, do you have any like uh, showcase photos of your favorite uh, things people have done with boxes by or uh, of anything like uh, what is the biggest thing uh, you have done uh, or seen any have done anybody have done with boxes by? Yes, yeah, so there I try to add uh, one stock photo for every generator, and there's a uh, Hackett.io page which I have quite some. Uh, Although I have not updated it, there's quite a few material up there. And my uh, favorite thing is uh, actually the, this, the the favorite thing I've done is this one, which is a <laughs> huge uh, wine box, which fits perfectly in the IKEA uh, uh, um, cupboard, which was the only way to have something fitting there. And my favorite, uh, Contribution is obviously this one, which is probably best generator overall, um, <laughs> included. So it's, it's uh, which is uh, for Agricola, the board game, and there's probably a bit difficult to see here. So there, there's special things to put all the the, the, the pieces here. There, there are um, special things to put the cards in there, um, and it. And the nice thing here is it uses a combination of new things and, and already existing things. So it's, for me, it's the basically the perfect way of doing this. Look what you have already, reuse that, and then the, the pieces that are not there, do them custom. And so that's, I would say that's the, that's the greatest thing. And it's, it's a huge success because it's not for me. So that's for me, I mean, I know the library very well. I can do stuff, but, but having third, third person, so probably basically be able to use it in that way and, and come up with something that's that great. Right it's a huge success in my eye. More questions? I have a few of them, but I would like that. Ella. Uh, could you add moving parts to in include like robotics parts? Yeah, like we, actual robotics parts. Yeah, we've done like that. I don't have the picture here, but there's a, we did a robot actually, yeah. which is uh, which is an Autobot, which is uh, has four. Um, maybe you can show a picture later. Yes. Uh, which has four servers in it, and it, although it only has like four degrees of freedom, it's able to walk, which is a miracle in my eyes. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's it's walking like a duck, and so oh, it's it's. it's uh, it lifts itself up on one leg and then moves forward. I mean, and it does that by, by, by pushing up with the second leg. It's, it's very cute. It's uh, something we did. 
it's originally 3D printed and we wanted to do a workshop and we said, well, we need one day for print one if we want 20. We need a, a month of, of printing time that that's not going to work. People are going to kill us. Um, and so I we did this in uh, boxes pie and we, we could basically laser cut all of them in one evening. Um, although putting the whole thing together is a bit challenging. We had a lot of play, uh, pieces, but it, it worked out well. Actually, we have been using it in, for first year students just to introduce them to basic of electronics and uh, how to use the servos and how to build a robot. We, we have been using this, this robot as, an, as a tool, as an example. Yeah. There's another thing that's actually not even published. I need to clean up the code at some point. I did a, a cocktail robot mm -hmm. uh, in Boxes Park, which is basically, it's, it's a huge carousel with two uh, layers of bottles. Um, uh, that that are on on uh, you can be tilted forward and there's a one arm in the middle that that rotates and then pulls those pulls levers to tilt them and, and pour in the middle. Um, it's, it's it's like this big one. This, this high from the uh, It's not completely laser cut, so there's some mechanical building on the on the bottom, but but um, the main part. And all the gears are always accompanied. So you can use that. Um, the problem is that if you're using most materials, are not as sensitive as you would want for for, uh, for robotics. The wood is very strong, but it's it's soft. It's really all a sponge, more or less. Uh, one of the reasons why you can hold it together with a hammer, it just gives the. the, the but about robotic arms, have you thought about it? I have, I have actually a generator which is not really finished that puts uh, uh, arm segments and puts uh, servers into them, but I've not really played around with that. But it's actually in there. And you can do that. It would probably need, basically uses the same uh, pieces as does the uh, Autobot. So it uses also those tiny 9G, and cram servos, yes. which is, I mean, it moves technically, but it's not moving in. Okay, yeah. Any more questions? I have one, you can still think on your question. I have one. I'm, I'm interested about the community. So what has been the contribution of the community to this project, considering that it has been quite popular, so it's been used in a lot of, of labs all around the world and a lot of makerspaces. And what do you expect of the community in the near future? So there have been a few very notable contributions, but overall, most of the code is still done by me. And it's still, you still need to get pretty involved and you need to have the skill sets, you need to know Python, you need to get into all this whole architecture thing to know. A lot of things are easy to do if you know what level of this architecture you, you need to change. I mean, you can do this uh, 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 you can do this, of course, the other way. You can make custom pieces for all of this and it's will be much more coded, will be much more complicated, will need much more time to get this done. So, so it's, it helps if you have a, the right understanding on, on, on how the library works. But there are a couple of, of generators that have been uh, contributed. There is has the backend, which is a huge piece of work, uh, which is uh, if you place this whole <laughs> in Cairo, uh, in a, I don't know, Python uh, file. So I think a lot of people are overestimating what, what community contribution can do for an open source project. And if you're realistic in, in how, how those projects work, uh, you have to be prepared to do the very most of, your, of the work you own. If you do an open source project and hope that other people will do all the work, that's, that's, that's what's happening, at least not your own anything. Then, but there are a couple of very interesting contributions and we try to get them in. And then do you have any ideas? How can you promote this contribution? How can? Well, I did actually quite a bit of, 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 of API documentation and stuff like that, but I'm not sure if anyone's actually doing that. <laughs> I just yesterday or today, yesterday got, 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 an, uh, 
got a, a pull request for people fixing typos so in the documentation so someone must be reading it um, <laughs> i guess a lot of people even if they do something they may not contribute it back because it's very special i mean same for me when, when i need something i, I hack it up and, and then maybe it's something that's very special and it's a one-time thing for the one where we said well we need to mount this thing to the wall and it doesn't fit here and it needs that and, and, and then you say well there's no point in actually publishing it because it's a you know, one 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 off basically do you receive a lot of suggestions for example i would like to have uh yes. and... so, so I, I still so there's a in github there's like 45 tickets open so there's maybe 20 of, of things i want to do and there's a lot of ah uh, this box looks cool and we don't need to we need a dispenser for coke for coke cans and whatever <laughs> there's still a lot of things so if, if you're bored pick one of those <laughs> if you don't have an idea on your own um yeah there, there's still people request stuff i need to but for me it's a hobby thing and it depends on how many how much time it's not my only hobby so <laughs> Uh, so well, actually your hobbies are reflected in the yeah in the tools that you have there yeah. and so at some point i might pick something and implement it if i feel like it and i've done it and, but there's some stuff that's still open after you know any further questions okay well, uh another one for me so what about the ideas? So how do you get the ideas? It's just that you are at home at some point. Okay, I I would like to have this a uh, wine closet or whatever. So where do you get the ideas? They're, they are not ideas, they are needs. They are needs, okay. So, so this is a lot driven by, I need something and it's not there yet. So In this case, I needed it. Yeah, or someone else did it. <laughs> but where did it come there? Or, I don't remember because I was with this uh, in the beginning. Uh, where did it come the initial idea? Okay, I need to build a box and I need to build a system to create boxes. So where did this idea come from? Well, I think it's a natural thing. If you have a hacker space, you need to store stuff. And uh, it also was basically the first thing we were playing around with, with the laser cutter. It's, it's a basically natural, I don't know. It's a natural thing for me to choose. If you have a laser cutter, you need boxes. For some, their boxes is one thing. The other thing is hours for some reasons. I don't understand it. If you have a laser cutters, hours that disappear appear suddenly for some reason and boxes. It's just the way the world is. I don't know if this works the same way here. Yeah, somehow, yeah. Keychains also, it's especially for kids. <laughs> So we need to create some kind of system also for kitchens. Like we have to have the... But starting to make a boxes that really fit to each other without any extra, like that. Anything like what are those things you can get from the uh, store? Screws or screws or yeah, hinges. Or... Natural, just just to print the walls, and then then start screwing. Yeah, we are doing that. That doesn't need need them. They just so need that's, it. I think that's the creative. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's that's the thing. That's also one of the reasons why I have these laser cut hinges. I mean, they are not as good as metal hinges, obviously, but they are easier to assemble than metal hinges, which are a pain if you want to screw them in and they are tiny and whatever. Mm. And you need to have the hinges. And if you don't have the hinges, you need to drive somewhere or wait until shops open again and stuff like this, or order on Amazon and wait a day. Um, and everything you can. Cut out right away. You you have you, it's, it's there. So 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 there's a even if it's not as practical and maybe a, a proper hardware would work better. The thing you can cut you have right away and it's a big benefit for a lot of things. I think that there's a step between I'm drawing the outline with Inkscape and then I. Cut it for the first time and then it's one centimeter not big enough and if I then have to enlarge the whole thing in all sides then you know, of course generating it instead mm. it's a very obvious next step because yes. one box is easy to do in any state but parameterization and parameterization scaling Uh, any question? Last one for me. How do you see 
these boxes will not be in 10 years' time. <laughs> to be realistic, I think there's still a lot of things to do, but this uh, travel graphics has limitations. And as few of the things I've done run into them because you don't have a proper li graphics library that does all the math for you. So, so making complicated shapes is, is, is not something that, that the library really does well. So it, it's, it really thinks inside the box in, in, in that way. It's, it just likes re, uh, right angles and stuff. You can have a few other angles, but you, you won't do a lot of complicated things. I want to push it a bit more into, into mechanisms and, and, and machines and stuff like this. Uh, I've done a rotary um, attachment for the laser cutter and stuff, but it's also two boxes and a, a stepper motor and a few roller things. Not that complicated. Um, and so I want to see more of this uh, uh, compliant mechanism stuff. So more snap fits, more. Uh, more bending uh, and more integral springs. There's still a lot of things to do in that area that I think is interesting. And maybe at some point, someone with artistic talent may improve <laughs> some of them because uh, I'm doing this because my artistic talent is enough for rectangular boxes. <laughs> and uh, so, 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 so I stick to what I, I can do. Uh, so any ideas? What would you like to have in boxes you feel? Do you have any suggestion for him? Now is your chance. <laughs> no? Well, we will think about it and perhaps we, we will send you an email. So Florian, thank you very much. It has been, I'm going to be also strange. <laughs> it has been really nice to have you here. Uh, we appreciate your presence. And I think that the software that you have built, it really had an impact within the community. And I think this is one important thing when you are in, in open source software and open source communities. Perhaps it would be nice if some of the people that are going to see this video later uh, could contribute within the community. So you have in the website, you have access to the GitHub so they can send you suggestions uh, and even also code for, for, for new designs. And that's all on my side. Uh, thank you very much.